Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me. This is another showcase of a divine feminine from the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Today is, you would know her as Mother Mary. If you're just tuning in to this series, you're kind of smack dab in the middle. We started on 818 with um, introduction of the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Mother Sophia and the Sophia Dragon Tribe. And then 819 is about ISIS. 820 yesterday for me uh, it was for Hathor. Today we had Green Terra showcased. And tomorrow, 822, will be Mother Mary. This one that I'm going to video now. Then we have Magdalene, Kuan Yin, and wrapping it up with my grand white buffalo calf woman. I hope you're enjoying these. It's been very fun to create and connect with these amazing divine feminine ascendant masters. So when we talk about Mother Mary, there is obviously a preconceived connotation of who she is, what she represents. And it's because it's really been shoved down our throats in an indoctrinated way. So I'm going to give you the trigger warning, trigger warning statement. There's a lot about Ascendant Master Mary that you probably have never heard before. And if you do hear it, you're going to be like, nah, that's not right. It's not religious information. Okay. She had many incarnations. She's very, very powerful, very loving, very nurturing. And she brings to the table a lot of wisdom. She is more than what you ever thought she was. So let's dig in. Mother Mary is, in this now moment, a mentor for fulfilling your prophecy within the high council. Now, she works with whoever asks her, whomever. Of course, it's been put throughout history that she's Christian you know, the, the Catholic, like those are the groups that tend to focus on her. She works with any soul that asks for her assistance. One eleven on the clock. One second. Sorry. Little daytime, you know, package delivery action. Okay. So she is known as she of a thousand roses. Don't you just love that? I, I I had seen it before when I read the Sophia Code the first time. And I, I thought, oh, that's nice. But the more that I really ruminate on it, it's so fitting for her. It really, really is. So Ascended Master Mary, Mother Mary, uses She of a Thousand Roses for her transmission broadcast. The teachings of the rose. For the walking of the spiral path to open one's sacred heart. This is from Mary. When my individual voice arose in an asking to be born within the still no thing of Sophia's womb, it was heard by the angelic witnesses as the ecstasy of a rose opening to the morning sunlight. Baptized by the dew of a new dawn, since the conception of my soul's light, my prayers remain the same, to nurture and grow the children of Sophia's creation. As such, I am called upon as mother of mothers. Guided by my soul's prayer throughout eons of divine service, I am and have lived many lifetimes in loving support of humanity's evolution. In my most recent and final incarnation or life stream on earth, I came as a highly advanced soul incarnating as a Hebrew woman named Mary into a spiritual community called the Essenes. I was born into an important messianic prof prophecy. Before I was even conceived, the ancient text declared me as a mother of salvation for humanity my birth and the birth of my son yeshua was foretold to the prophets of my people 
hundreds of years prior to our arrival. <clears throat> Many angelic signs and messages were sent to my mother, Anna, during her pregnancy with me. These messages announced the importance of my birth, my destiny, and that I received that I should receive extensive training to fulfill my divine life purpose. I was born with clear memories of my spiritual training from other lifetimes that prepared me to fulfill this destiny. So she wasn't born with amnesia. She didn't have to work her way through finding herself again and realizing her soul path and realizing her soul contract and all that stuff. She started out early in life with her memories that helped her get a very early start because every moment counted. My mother, Anna, was a gifted oracle priestess and devoted mother. She arranged for my mystery school teachings to begin at age four. The teachings eventually revealed I was a reincarnated oracle, high priestess of Isis and Hathor, with extraordinary potential to fulfill the prophecies of my people. Many are returning. Many have spoken the return and the reconciliation of the divine feminine Christ with the divine masculine Christ energies for the heart of humanity. Know you are meant to fulfill the prophecies of the next golden age with innumerable masters that are incarnating alongside of you in this moment. At this time, your world is filled with masters walking upon earth. You are to shine together as an invincible light that transforms all darkness, just as the prophecy said you would. This is the age of one body of Sophia Christ to be revealed by each of you, working together as one, seamlessly supporting one another with extraordinary talents and gifts. I offer you my support. As an ascended master mentor who lived in human form, carrying important ancient wisdom within me, just as you are stepping into an age for fulfilling your prophecy. This brings a heightened awareness of your life purpose and spiritual destiny that may often feel daunting to you in your daily human life. I am here to help you navigate the way, the way ahead as an accessible teacher friend and guide for birthing the new prophecies of ancient wisdom carried within your own heart. Now, this is where I'm going to give you what I've accumulated over the last 18 months. I've really been in communication with Mary. And uh, one of the first encounters that we had, she wanted to set the record straight. And some of this stuff came from that. So again, trigger warning, but it's important to know the truth. The truth may not come in a package that feels comfortable. It doesn't mean it's not true. It's important enough that she give it to me. She's given it to many of us that have contacted her. It's important that we honor her with hearing it and accepting it. This is where the consciousness bias can corrupt the messages. I asked Ascendant Master Mary to clarify some details as some of what is written in the Sophia Code and in other books <clears throat> about Ascendant Masters does not confirm and it does not resonate with me. I did a video with her. It's on my channel. Um, you can find it if you're interested in watching that. It's from last year. What I have confirmed directly with Ascendant Master Mary. Anna, Mary's mother, a powerful oracle, knew of Mary's birth, her gifts, her knowledge, and her need for the mystery school trainings, which did start at age four, <clears throat> and knew it was to prepare her for Yeshua's birth and all that that entailed. Mary and Joseph are twin flames. They were twin flames. They were together. They were married. They loved each other. They had a deep awareness and a deep connection that they were being called to be the parents, the earthly parents of Yeshua and all that energy essence would bring. 
There was no immaculate conception. There was no immaculate conception. Mary and Joseph had four children. A boy and a girl born prior to Yeshua. Yeshua. And then another boy right after. Mary delivered Yeshua at home in Bethlehem. There was no donkey rides while being pregnant. She was very emphatic about that. She was like, who even came up with that? No manger, no hay, no animals. The wise men of the fictitious birth story spread around the world were in fact hunting Yeshua's infant body. His birth was foretold and the kings of that time wanted him murdered to keep their reign intact. This is why, as a family, they left to escape the hunt of their son, and they were given refuge in the Isis temples, and this allowed for all of them to learn and practice the priest and priestesshood of the mystery school teachings. Once Yeshua became a teenager, he took a pilgrimage to India where he studied with Buddha. And that same soul of that Buddha that he studied with is my soul father, Father Yogananda. And Father Yogananda also confirmed all this. It strongly irks Mary for masses of people to think that she was not given true love or had a true family, and that her experiences in her meaningful relationships as a mother and a wife didn't exist. This is true of her and Joseph, as well as Yeshua and Maggie, who were indeed in love and who did marry and went on to grow into adulthood and watch their 17 children grow into adulthood. Okay, from her energy, direct from her. Teachings of the rose. The rose petals of the infinite sacred geometries that you see in the rose petals and the light matrixes that play through the divine feminine, feminine wisdom are foundational elements for birthing all of life. The rose is symbolic of the sacred heart of Sophia. They're interchangeable. When you see a rose it in a symbol form, it can be um, that it means the sacred heart of Sophia as well. From which the teachings of the rose arise to experience to the one divine mother within you. All so that we find our way back to the truth. That is the power is within us. As she of a thousand roses, I initiate your awareness to discover that your heart chakra is the rose blooming within one sacred heart of Sophia. And so too are the, all the hearts. The teachings of the rose provide a spiral path for awakening your awareness to your own sovereign yet interwoven relationships with the hearts of all beings within the one body of Sophia Christ. Daily communion with the rose on your own heart creates a clear pathway for hearing the loving voice of Sophia, your higher self and your inner child who adore you. If you doubt that you are worthy of love or that you are loved, it is within your own heart that you will finally hear the voice of divinity worshiping you as an embodiment of Sophia. Walking the way is a daily spiritual practice for those initiated in the teachings of the rose. Those who live in accordance with the guidance of hearing the voice of their heart for the rose reveals that there is no higher guidance than the following of the way of your own heart which is the throne of your higher self walking the way of this creative tension is not a casual affair 
It is not a casual event for your human ego, nor is it for the faint of heart. It's a spiritual path that requires daily relinquishing of all attachments to suffering and lack and victimhood and a complete surrender to the voice of your higher self guiding you from your heart chakra energy center. It requires significant courage to trust your innocence guiding you and faith to follow the path to your greatest potential. And I've said that many times. This journey requires a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith. The way is the simplest road and the most direct route to living a joyfully aligned life and fulfilling your own destiny. The divine feminine Christ embodiment transcends the boundaries of religion, indigenous traditions, and modern spirituality across the earth. I am a recognized and trusted central figure for seemingly different spiritual pathways that all lead to the one source creator of all things. I am mentoring humanity and how these many spiritual paths intersect beyond all seeming differences within the one sacred heart of Sophia consciousness. Again, Sophia consciousness is Christ consciousness is unity consciousness. It's all the same. It's all the same. You don't have one without the other. I highly value the human experience in earth school. It is a wonderful vehicle for ascension. And I'm going to just say, there are so many star seeds and there are so many ev evolving souls on earth because it's a place that is packed full of opportunity to learn through obstacles. Is it not? Like this is a really tough place to be. That's why we have the, the admiration from the galactics, from other beings. They understand, they're higher consciousness beings. They understand when we, rose our, we raise our hand and we volunteer to come incarnate into human form on this planet, it is quite a task. And we all deserve a lot of respect for making that effort. It is a wonderful vehicle for ascension. And I often choose to interact with my initiates moving beyond the laws of form to appear in dreams, visions, and through physical signs. I revel in the everyday detail of your life that are all contributing to your journey of ascension. You can call on me for help with anything at all. For every moment of your life is precious to me. When I read that, I thought, even when I'm brushing my teeth, <laughs> even when I'm just, you know, like doing the, th the stuff, it's all precious to her. We take it for granted. She's saying every single moment of our life is precious to her. The journey of ascension is best traveled with good friends who have the way knowledge. I honor how vulnerable and how uncomfortable human feelings about this journey along the way can become. I offer you mentorship, friendship, and assure you, I recall the pressures and passions of living your full potential on earth. My divine support is offered from the real life perspective of all of my human incarnations. Although my <clears throat> destiny elevated me to a status of being internationally known figure to the end of my life, I was consistently challenged by the rampant repression of women. Everywhere I traveled for my ministry, I faced the socially conditioned demands placed upon women to silence our feelings and relinquish our sovereignty to co-create our reality. My heart has always guided my actions to be courageous, graceful, and strong in response to those demands, to firmly stand in truth of what was important to me to feel. And I never turned against my inner guidance or chose to deny my feelings. 
the integrity of my emotional safety eventually became as important as my divine feminine embodiment, especially for others to witness so that they can empower themselves. In your own daily practice, listen to your heart guidance, which may bring you awareness to uncomfortable feelings, actions, or shadows. When you turn into your heart guidance, it's showing you your next stop along the journey of your ascension. Allow it. Welcome it. Embrace it. Feel it. Process it. And let it go. The mind was designed to be an empty space for the visions of your heart. Then to be manifested as such. The spiritual purpose of your mind is to interface with the multidimensional realities that are involved with bringing that which does not exist before into form. The physical co-creation of your time and your true desires are orchestrated by a willing mind and reveals the power of your heart to fulfill your destiny. That is why decluttering your mind is vital. Where your mind goes, your energy flows. The mind may rest as an empty space. It was originally designed to be. If it is assured that the heart is giving way to your journey. Violence only arises when the voice of your heart is denied long enough to cause an outburst. And we, we talk about this a lot in manifesting. We talk, when we talk about manifesting, people will often ask, how do I, why do I keep having the same type scenario play out in my life over and over again whenever it makes me so miserable? Well, let's break that down. Are you, are you always thinking about the narcissist in your life? Are you always going back to the ones that hurt you? And they're always, you're always going back and reliving the trauma because what occupies your mind is what gets manifested. The universe is going to give you what you're giving energy to. What is in your mind and you're constantly thinking about, that's what you're giving energy to. So you have to stop. You got to get off the crazy train. You got to get that stuff dealt with so it can stop taking up free rent in your mind. Kick it out. Evict it. Be done with it. Heal. Heal. Then you can start to give energy toward the things that manifest your highest and best good in co-creation and not your fears. Your destiny is a promise you made to yourself. Turning away from your heart is breaking that promise. My greatest delight is whenever you recognize me as your equal and experience me as an essential ally, close friend, a divine reflection for your human journey. Thank you for opening your heart to know me anew in this lifetime. I have much more to offer you as an accessible friend than as an antiquated statue of worship stone. She is working with um, violetlotusenergy.com. And one of our other staff members, my soul sister, Aurelia, she is working with her for a service offering. I don't know the details of it yet, but it is coming soon. So definitely check out www.violetlotusenergy.com and you will see that new service offered soon, as well as new services from Hathor and other Ascendant Masters that just love working with the collective. Thank you for joining me and tune in tomorrow for another divine feminine ascendant master of the Sophia dragon tribe. See you again next time.